What is going on YouTube? Andrew Miller from hook'emheadlines.com. Coming back at y'all today with a bevy of recruiting analysis, notes, nuggets, updates. Um, in this video, I'm gonna go through two, um, two evaluations and uh, prospect breakdowns for the two commits that Texas has landed in as many days this weekend. Um, also update uh, some status of top priority recruits, uh, you know, what, what kind of happened during the official visit weekend. I'm not gonna obviously get to everything here just since there's so many updates and notes and they're still coming in by the hour at this point. Um, I'm sure I'll have more videos this week talking about where Texas stands with some of the other top recruits that were on campus this weekend, maybe some that they didn't land or you know, that um, we didn't get more immediate news and updates for uh, you know, immediately following the conclusion of the official visit weekend. I'm recording this on the night of June 18th, so um, you know, any news and notes I have will be as of the recording of this video, obviously. Um, but yeah, I want to go ahead and start with, like I said, the two commitments that Texas landed um, in the last two days. I'll go through those breakdowns, uh, summarize them a bit more than I usually do, because I usually do one video per commitment um, in terms of the analysis of the of the uh, recruit. But uh, yeah, and then I'll get get into some, like I said, some notes and nuggets to cap this video. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start. Uh, just go in chronological order here. Uh, the first commitment that Texas landed this weekend um, was one of my favorite commits in the 2024 class so far. It's uh, four-star Scottsdale uh, Desert Mountain cornerback Santana Wilson. Um, he's the son of uh, former All-Pro NFL defensive back Adrian Wilson, who I believe is also directly, I think he's a director of player personnel for the Carolina Panthers now. Um, but, you know, I, I like this commitment. Um, you know, heading into the weekend, it seemed like Texas was mainly prioritizing some of the top in-state cornerbacks in the 2024 class. Guys like five-star Waco Connolly cornerback Kobe Black, uh, four-star Temple Lake Belton corner Selwyn Bridges, um, even Wardell Mack. Uh, you know, some of the top guys that Texas, uh, you know, seemed to be making uh, or seemed to be prioritizing at the top of their big board at the position. But, you know, Wilson is... I think pretty underrated, undervalued across the board by some of the major recruiting services. You know, on three has him as I believe a top 100 prospect um, in their own uh, 2024 class rankings. But uh, ESPN, 247 Sports, and uh, Rivals all have him well outside the top 100. I believe most of them have him as a three-star prospect. But you know, this is a guy. He's a lengthy cornerback, six foot one, around 180 pounds. Uh, has good. He has good speed. He's tremendous ball skills. Um, you know, good length, physicality is a is a major plus for him. Um, all around, I, I really like what he brings to the table. Um, I mean, just when you look at the physical tools, um, you know, his ball skills and just his overall skill set, he doesn't profile as someone as a like three star recruit. I mean, especially given his on field production and how good he's looked in the seven on seven camp or seven on seven in recruiting camp and combine circuits the last two off seasons. Um, I'll, I'll get to some of his high school stats later, but you know, I, I'd imagine if if Wilson boosts his recruiting profile a little bit more, you know, has a big senior season, then I could see his you know some of his recruiting rankings getting bumped up to like a mid to high four star. But Texas ended up landing uh, his commitment. You know, some of the other presumed top schools in this recruitment: Arizona State uh, former uh, former Texas staffer Brian Carrington. Uh, you know, was leading that recruitment for the Sun Devils, and it looked like uh, Arizona State was the favorite there for a while. Um, you know, he, it, it seemed like there were a number of different schools while they had offered him, not necessarily pushing for him, but most of the schools going after him were on the West Coast. He is an Arizona native, um, you know, but Texas, you know, made the push this weekend. It, this was Wilson's first official visit. Uh, he started his official visit on June 16th this weekend. Um, and obviously, Texas made a big impression with the offer. I do want to note they just recently offered him. It was, I believe, on May 16th, so um, just over one month ago. This was, like I said, this was his first visit to the 40 Acres since his offer. And, you know, Texas was able to seal the deal here really quickly and you know, get someone, like I said, who's a high upside. I believe he will be a boundary cornerback on the 40. It's rare that you see someone that's heading into their senior year of high school that's already at six foot 180 pounds. Um, you know, he's not a guy that's going to have to come in and add, you know, 15, 20 pounds, um, you know, during the summer workout program before his uh, true freshman campaign next fall. And so that's a big plus, um, you know, for someone that has pretty polished skill set in terms of, again, his physicality, um, his understanding of developing route concepts, his ball skills, and just his overall football IQ. Um, you know, he's a guy that, you know, while he is more of a high upside player that still could compete for some early reps um, in first year or two for him on campus. 
Um, but yeah, some of the other you know things that stand out to me about Wilson, um, I've mentioned his physicality a couple of times. You know, he's a guy that has quick hips. Um, he's got long arms, good speed. He's someone that can press at the line of scrimmage. You know, you see that a lot out of Ryan Watts on the boundary for Texas, where he's able to you know get leverage on wide receivers. You know, just a couple of seconds after the snap, and you know that really limits what route concepts can develop for opposing offenses, and it really kind of hamstrings them. Um, you know, at least with that one cornerback. And you know, Ryan Watts is a guy that we've seen can really thrive in one-on-one main coverage on the boundary, and I think Wilson is that same type of cornerback. You know, just from the perspective of that physicality, that ability, that that man coverage ability that he brings to the table, it's a really good fit in PK's defense. I mentioned earlier some of his standout high school stats that he's posted the last two seasons at Desert Mountain. Um, He's got six interceptions in the last two seasons, 25 pass breakups. If you watch film on him, it's not only the high school film that impresses with his ball skills and just his ability to separate the football from the receiver, but also his camp and combine film as well. And and, some of his reps there, he just has a knack for timing the timing the pass, and again, separating the ball from the receiver. It's a combination of good length, good hands, physicality. Uh, I haven't mentioned his vertical ability yet, but that's something that also um, is a plus for him. So all in all, he's someone that's going to be a really, really solid cover corner at the next level. Um, And then, you know, another major plus for him that I would be remiss if I skipped over is his tackling ability. Uh, He's got more than 90 combined tackles the last two seasons at Desert Mountain. Um, Again, his frame... Uh, his ability to contest space really limits big plays. He doesn't get beat over the top very often. And, you know, he's someone that, you know, if if the ball carrier does come his way, um, you know, whether it be defending the run or, you know, bringing down a uh, ball carrier in, in the open field, um, he's someone that you can trust. He's not going to miss many tackles. And Texas has had a problem with that in the past. I don't think you're going to see that with a guy like Wilson. So, you know, there's some versatility to his game for sure. Uh, thanks to his tackling ability and ability to contest space. Wilson is the first pure cornerback commit to Texas's 2024 class. The Longhorns do have four-star Houston Clear Lake athlete Hunter Mott committed. Um, I, I know there's been a little bit of smoke recently surrounding the status of his commitment. Um, you know, we'll see if that holds up. But you know, I believe that Mott was recruited to be a defensive back. I think it will be interesting to ultimately see what comes of the status of Mott's commitment after you get a guy like. Uh, Wilson in, in this class and then you know Texas is still in fantastic spot with guys like Kobe Black with Selman Bridges some of the other top cornerback uh, priority recruits that I mentioned earlier in the video so I think this could be another loaded class for the Longhorns at the cornerback position you know they signed a really really uh, highly recruited guy in the 2023 class in Malik Muhammad Muhammad an early enrollee that's probably going to make some noise as a true freshman at the field corner position um, you know I think Texas is going to be stock full of talent and depth at the position for a long time heading into the future if they can you know secure commitments from some of their other top guys on the board like i said like kobe black like selman bridges so let's go ahead and take a look here at the other commitment that texas landed this weekend that's a four star six foot one and 175 pound uh spring branch smithson valley wide receiver freddie debose jr um, DuBose is the first wide receiver to commit to the Longhorns 2024 class. He committed this evening. You're coming into the weekend, I wasn't exactly sure how much Texas would be pushing for DuBose, um, but it's clear that, you know, between all the, you know, I wrote about this in the article I posted on the site today, breaking down his commitment and his game, that, you know, I wasn't really sure how much Texas was going to push for DuBose if, you know, they were going to be more prioritizing, you know, an official visit like Ryan Wingo's five star wide receiver out of St. Louis. Texas has guys like five-star wide receiver Micah Hudson coming in next weekend. They also had four-star uh, athlete Aaron Hampton on campus this weekend. So, um, you know, there's a multitude of wide receiver, you know, pretty much all blue-chip wide receiver talent. And, you know, I think Texas was only really looking to fill three spots at the position in the 2024 class. You know, one, one name that I did mention was four-star, uh, I believe, yeah, Lucas Lovejoy product, uh, Parker Livingstone. He's announcing his commitment on July 1st. So, this is a spot that, you know, this is a position that could fill up fast for Texas in the 2024 class. But, um, you know, DuBose is a really interesting, uh, really interesting recruit because, you know, he's someone that, uh, you know, early in this cycle, you know, looking like maybe like a year or 18 months ago, was considered to be one of the top early wide receiver recruits. 
uh, for the Longhorns. But, you know, unfortunately for DeBose, he suffered a season-ending ACL tear uh, in week one of his junior season. Uh, that was last year when he was still at uh, Clemens High School in Shirts, Texas. And so, um, you know, obviously suffered a major setback there. Um, you know, he, he again, he was someone that was viewed as one of the top early in-state wide receiver recruits in this class. Um, and seemed like some, some schools were starting to back off him. You know, after the injury, I wasn't really sure where Texas or where, where he stood on Texas's big board at the position. Um, you know, but he had a really, really quick recovery. You know, an ACL tear is something that can take guys a year, you know, eight months to a year, if not longer, to work their way back from. DeBose, it took him six or eight months about. You know, he was already back this spring running track and field for uh, Smithson Valley High School. Um, you know, he competes in uh, multiple track and field events. I know he does like the triple jump, long jump, a couple track events as well. Um, and, you know, being able to already compete at a high level in the in those events in track and field within eight months after you suffer an ACL tear, the ability to turn around and recover from that injury that quickly is very, very impressive. But, um, you know, it, really the only film that you have of him and the only evaluation in the last six or eight months um, is, you know, pretty limited camp and combine circuit stuff and, you know, some one-on-one -on -one drills and then, uh, you know, his track and field numbers. And, you know, he's, I, I, at least from what I saw from him during the camp and combine circuit, you know, it still looked like, you know, he still has a big brace on that knee. Obviously, he's still recovering from that injury, still trying to get back to full speed, but he's already looking pretty solid. Um, you know, the cutting, the change of direction, um, it looks like it's coming back. Again, not fully there yet, but, but yeah, you know, if, if DuBose continues on this, um, you know, on this upward trend that he's on right now, if, you know, continuing to get his speed back, his vertical ability, his change of direction, then he's going to be a really solid pickup for Texas in this class. I believe most recruiting and most of the major recruiting services have him rated around like the number 30 wide receiver in the country in the 2024 class. You know, if he gets back to the version of himself that we saw during his sophomore season in high school and prior to the injury during, um, you know, camp combine circuits last summer and spring, He's a type of talent is like top 15 or top 20 wide receiver recruit in this class. And so, you know, he's, he's a high upside guy. He does come with his risks, but, um, you know, it's all surrounding the injury. But again, I mentioned it, the ability to work his way back from that injury that fast, you know, be able to respond from that type of setback says a lot, not only about his character, but, you know, his commitment to the game. And, you know, again, just to making sure he's the, that he's got his body right to compete on the field and, and you know, but more specifically, some of the strengths that, you know, I've noticed about DuBose, I've covered his recruitment for a little over a year now. Um, you know, a few of the things that stand out and that you'll notice when watching film on him. Uh, first is the body control and strong hands. Um, you know, he's someone that uh, is able to, I'd say, out-physical a lot of opposing defensive backs and coverage. Um, you know, I've heard this characteristic of his game mentioned today where you know, he catches the ball with his hands and not his body but you know when you got strong hands strong wrists and you know you really just are a solid fundamental wide receiver you got that natural wide out skill set you know it's easy to go up and pluck those 50 50 balls or you know really just make it look easy to snatch you know snatch ball over an opposing defensive back um you know i don't want to get too deep into any one particular type of throw that could go his way but you know, he's someone on those contested 50-50 balls that is going to be an excellent receiver to have, especially on the boundary. Um, you know, I haven't mentioned it yet, but his vertical ability is pretty elite. And, you know, while he's still kind of working back to that level um, where he is, you know, one of the top vertical athletes in this class, like he was prior to the ACL tear, um, you know, he's still someone that is going to be a, like really a nightmare for opposing defensive backs to cover on those contested 50-50 balls on the outside. Um, you know, a few other things for him, again, prior to the ACL tear, speed, change of direction, just elusiveness in the open field. You know, Debo DeBose was a really, really dangerous open field athlete. Uh, he's someone that can make a lot happen, whether you were given the ball, giving him the ball, like motion jet sweeps or, you know, get him in, getting him involved in the shorter intermediate passing game. Um, he was really dangerous after the catch. And, you know, he's, he's going to be working his way back to becoming that type of athlete again. You know, but again, someone that has that ability to line up multiple different positions pre-snap and 
ability to make plays in space is a huge deal in Sark's offense. So I, I, I like the fit there. Um, you know, a few other things that stand out to me about DeBose, um, you know, maybe some of the finer points in his game. You know, he's he's someone that is going to be a big play threat. I guess that's not like super specific on his game, but I, I think that you can't undervalue the ability to have someone on the boundary that can still take the top off of opposing defenses. You know, I think of like Isaiah Nayor before his injury. I mean, he's someone that can not only go up and get those contested 50-50 balls with his big six foot three frame on the outside, but he can also beat you deep. He's got that type of speed. He can put on the afterburners after the catch. And that reminds me a lot of watching DuBose on film. Even still, you know, even working his way back from injury, DuBose is still someone that is faster than most of the defensive backs he faces. And he's got long speed. He runs the 400 meter, uh, again, in track and field. And so um, he's someone that's going to burn past some opposing defenders. He's going to be able to be a deep threat. Texas has multiple deep threats that they're stocking up in this wide receiver room. And so, um, you know, the the passing game is going to be really dangerous to stretch the field here in the near future for the Longhorns. Um, you know, I, I've mentioned change of direction a few times that, you know, DuBose, I think one of the more underrated parts of his game is his short area quickness. I think for someone that's a boundary receiver, short area quickness is often overlooked. It's not necessarily the most important characteristic, but I mentioned DuBose's versatility, you know, his ability to be moved around pre-snap lineup on the inside or out of the slot. And, you know, in the short intermediate passing game, that short area quickness is going to help him out a lot. Um, you know, I'll talk more about some of his potential areas of improvement in a moment, but, you know, one thing that sticks out to me that's still developing for him is his route running ability. You know, while he's got a lot of versatility to his game, I think his route tree is still, you know, is still a work in progress. And obviously the injury didn't, was a setback for him in that regard, but he is getting better. And I think that part of his game will continue to come along in the next year. And, you know, it's something that Chris Jackson can really help him develop on the 40 acres. You know, Steve Sarkeesian said that he really wanted a strong technical receivers coach. And you know, Jackson is that guy with that NFL background. I think he's really going to be able to help DeBose in that part of his game. Um, but yeah, like I said, short area quickness, um, you know, the ability to get the ball in traffic. Those are things that are really going to help maybe mask some of the, uh, you know, maybe inefficiencies or, you know, some of the areas that, that DeBose is still developing as a route runner in the meantime. So um, all around, there's a lot of things you have to love about DuBose's skill set. He's just a really solid natural wide receiver. Um, you know, he's someone that uh, is going to be able to not only stretch the field in Sark's offense, but just really be able to give you a solid, versatile guy that's going to make life difficult for opposing defensive coordinators and opposing defensive backs, just with all the different ways you can line him up. You know, ultimately, uh, ultimately I think his projection at Texas, I think he will be a boundary wide receiver. I've mentioned that a couple of times. Yeah, Texas could be losing uh, Isaiah Nayor and A.D. Mitchell if they both end up declaring early for the 2024 NFL Draft next offseason. And so, you know, Texas is going to need some um, new faces to step up at boundary receiver here in the near future. Um, I think that's why getting a guy like DeBose in this class is so important. Um, but yeah, so, you know, hopefully that helps fill you guys in if you're looking to learn a little bit more on, you know, what Santana Wilson and Freddie DeBose Jr. both bring to the table. Um, in Texas's 2024 class. Um, you know, I want to finish out off this video just by providing some news, notes, updates coming out of the official visit weekend, um, you know, kind of updating the status of some of the biggest priority visitors. So I mentioned at the outset of the video, Texas had a little more than uh, 20 official visitors on campus this weekend. I think it was 21. Um, you know, some of the biggest names on campus this weekend beyond the two guys that committed and Wilson and uh, Tubos. Uh, Five-star wide receiver Ryan Wingo. Uh, I, I believe I mentioned his name earlier in the video, but he was one of the highest-rated recruits on campus this weekend. Uh, he's one of the top 10-rated wide receivers in the 2024 class by almost every single major recruiting service. Um, Four-star edge rusher Jordan Ross. I believe he's out of Alabama, uh, Vestavia, Vestavia Hills High School in Birmingham. Um, you know, he was one of the light, or late additions among the official visitors this weekend. Uh, he's got a lot of SEC schools after him. I believe George is the front runner there, but um, you know Texas tried to make a big push this weekend. I think they made a good impression on him, but it's going to be a lot of ground to make up. So um, you know it's still a recruitment to watch. Obviously, edge is an important position for Texas in this class, one of the biggest positions of need in this class. Um, and you know getting a guy like Ross would be huge. He's a top three, top five type edge rusher in this class. Uh, so a name we'll continue to be watching moving forward. Um, and then. Uh, 
I think the most important offensive lineman that was on campus this weekend was a five star and a five star modern day product and uh, the top rated offensive tackle recruit in the nation in the 2024 class, Brandon Baker. He's someone that I think was like an Oregon USC lean heading into the weekend, but I, Texas really knocked this one out of the park. Um, you know, Baker had a successful visit. I believe it was for the spring game earlier this off season. You know, that it was big for Texas just to get him to campus for the spring game. And now to be able to have a, like a very successful official visit, I think really sets up Texas well in this recruitment. Um, you know, Texas has plucked guys from West Coast schools before along the offensive line. Kyle Flood is no stranger to doing that on the recruiting trail. You just got to think back to like the 2022 class. You flip guys like four-star offensive tackle Cam Williams. I know that both these guys were from Texas, but still, um, you know, was able to pluck Cam Williams from Oregon. Don't forget Kelvin Banks, five-star offensive tackle. Um, flipped him from Oregon as well late in the 2022 cycle. So, um, you know, Kyle Flood's done this sort of thing before. He's positioning Texas really, really well in this recruitment. Um, you know, I, I, this is definitely one to watch and one that we'll keep you all updated on moving forward. Um, you know, I mentioned Wingo's name earlier, like a few moments ago, and um, I that was one of the recruitments I was watching really closely this weekend. Uh, I, I, bl- I would be surprised if he was the top wide receiver per priority among the out-of-state guys in this class. Um, you know, Texas, I, again, no stranger to recruiting elite wide receiver talent. You know, they got DeBose in this class this weekend. Um, Wingo's one of the top guys, and you know, I think Steve Starkeesian, Chris Jackson, they made a big impression on him. I wrote a piece this weekend saying that, you know, there was a report saying that Texas feels like they have a legit shot here. That was the messaging if Texas could make a big impression that they would set themselves at least in the thick of the top schools in this recruitment moving forward. And um, I think they did that in a little bit more. You know, one thing I did see was Ryan Wingo was connecting with Arch Manning a lot this weekend, which is good to see. Um, I'm, You know, if some of y'all follow recruiting really closely, you might know this, but uh, last year, Ryan Wingo's first unofficial visit uh, to Texas was actually on the same weekend that Arch Manning had his official visit. I believe that was the weekend of June 18th. Um, and so, you know, that this is something that's purposeful. Texas is, um, you know, being really strategic with the way they're moving around in this recruitment. And you know, I, like I said, I, I think that this is going to be one to watch moving forward because um, I think Texas set itself up really, really well here. Um, Another one of the most important, I think, blue chips that was on campus this weekend, four-star edge rusher Danny Okoye. Again, if you guys follow recruiting pretty closely, you might have heard this name pop up on the radar for Texas lately. Um, you know, strong. I, I think strong evaluation by a number of schools. He's a homeschool kid out of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, you know, really started to see his recruitment blow up nationally here the last few months. Texas was one of the schools that jumped into the mix here recently. I think Texas really, really did well. Pushed a lot of the right buttons during this visit. Um, Okoye made the trip. I, I started to see this a lot of chatter about this subject of him making the trip without his mom. His mom is an Oklahoma State grad. Again, he's someone that is about an hour away from Stillwater since he's in Tulsa. And I, I don't think Oklahoma, I don't even think Oklahoma State made his latest round of uh, uh, finalist cuts when he cut it down. I think it was like 10, to ten or eleven schools. Um, and so his mom's letting him be patient, go through this process. You know, Koi is going to be making a lot of these official visits by himself. And um, again, I think Texas did really, really well in this one. Um, Okoye is a high upside edge rusher, someone that's got the physical tools to be a really, really solid. I think they would put him at buck, I saw. Um, you know, but has kind of those elite physical tools to be, um, you know, a big impact pass rusher at the collegiate level. So. Um, you know, Texas sitting well in this one moving forward. I think he's one of the top out-of-state guys at the position in this class. Um, a few other names I wanted to mention, four-star Desert, or excuse me, uh, Phoenix Mountain Point running back Christian Clark, named I've ta- or a name that I've talked about a lot recently. And with good reason, he's one of the top running back recruits on Texas's board in this class. Um, it would not surprise me in the slightest if he was one of the next up to commit to the Longhorns in the 2024 class. Um, you know, I think that him and uh, Jarrett Gibson, the nation's top-rated running back recruit in the 2024 class out of IMG Academy, are the top two priorities at the position. I think it's been that way for a little while. Um, Deshard Choice has a great relationship here with Clark. You know, I think Texas is the overwhelming favorite in this recruitment at this point. And again, a lot of the chatter is that a com- commitment from Clark could be imminent. Um, it's one that you know, I had on commitment watch heading into the weekend, and I don't think anything has changed there. Um, And then a couple other names, uh, pretty much solely on the defensive side of the ball. Um, You know, one of the higher rated safety 
visitors this weekend on campus for the Longhorns was uh, four-star uh, Judson Con- or uh, Converse Judson, excuse me, uh, safety Miles Davis. Someone that I think was like more of like a USC Texas A and M lean heading into the weekend, but uh, heard Steve Wilfong say coming out of the weekend that Miles Davis is now a Texas lean. That Texas made a huge move. Um, I you know I didn't pay too much attention to the updates beyond just kind of doing my usual homework, uh, checking in on his status heading into the weekend. Like I said, I thought that you know that USC and Texas A and M were both pushing harder here, but. He looks like someone that's probably going to be a take in this class for the Longhorns. So someone to watch moving forward. He's pretty versatile, six foot one, 190 pound safety. Uh, you know, pretty physically gifted. Someone that um, I think could be a solid fit at Texas. Could be you know an impact guy two, three years down the road. Um, like I said, someone to watch moving forward because I think Texas could be in the lead now. Um, and then the last, yeah, there's about two more guys I wanted to mention here just because uh, defensive line recruiting I think is about to heat up for the summer. Um, I think the top guy among the defensive linemen that were officially visiting this weekend, four-star uh, Orlando Jones, product DeAndre Robinson. Uh, Robinson has been to Texas now, I think, two or three times. He's enjoyed all of his visits, spoken very highly of the visits after each occasion. I think he's still more of a Florida, Georgia, Alabama. You know what? I, I, I say that. He, probably still more of a Florida lean. I think Alabama made a big impression because they offered him They offered him last week, had him in on a visit, probably will get him in for another visit. I know Georgia is still pushing this recruitment too. But you know Texas is in a really good spot here. I think that they're still in the group of top schools for Robinson. They made a big impression this weekend. Uh, he's someone that really connects well with Bo Davis. Bo Davis is no stranger to recruiting big defensive lineman out of the southeast. You know, Robinson's a guy that's about six foot four, 315. So he'd be a really, I think a really stout, you know, just big body defensive lineman in the middle of the trenches for Bo Davis and the Longhorns. Um, he's, he's, he was one of my favorite recruits heading into the weekend. I, you know, I think the Texas would do well to continue to push for him, uh, but they're in a solid spot here. So um, that is the latest on him. Uh, and then wanted to mention four-star defensive lineman, Melvin Hills. Another guy that could be on commitment watch for Texas. I believe I heard Hills was hosted by Alfred Collins this weekend, which is a pretty big deal. Um, that means that Texas is, you know, really interested in him. He's someone that I think in like a month ago was more of an Ole Miss lean, but Texas is really pushing hard here. Um, you know, they like what he brings to the table. He's about what, six foot four, two hundred seventy five pound defensive lineman out of Louisiana. Um, so that's going to be a name to watch here this week. Um, I did forget earlier. I wanted to mention last name because I. There's still a lot of notes and stuff that I will have in my next video here, probably coming tomorrow. Uh, but last name I wanted to mention, three-star tight end out of uh, Langan Creek in Houston, Jordan Washington. Washington's really important right now because Texas missed out on four-star Laguna Beach tight end Brian R. Swanson, who committed to BYU earlier this week. Swanson was the first official visitor for Texas this month. It sounded like Texas was in a pretty good spot for him coming out of the official visit, but he still had officials... Uh, to see Oregon and BYU, who are both legitimate threats. And I know his, it sounded like his mom really liked BYU, and that's where he ended up. Um, he was kind of the top guy on Texas's board at tight end in this class. And I think Washington, you know, was kind of more of like the high upside guy. Texas has taken two tight ends in this class. I know Jeff Banks really likes Washington. Um, he's, again, a really solid receiving tight end. Um, but Texas really hit it big with this official visit. Um, you know, I... Washington's another guy I had to mention because I think he's someone that's going to be on commitment watch here in the next week or so. Um, so keep an eye on him because I think he could very well end up being the first tight end in this class. Anyway, um, we're running about 30 minutes long here. So like I said, I wanted to kind of pack as many notes and nuggets as I could into this video. Um, you know, Kind of provide some updates coming out of the official visit weekend, break down the games of uh, Santana Wilson and Freddie DeBose Jr., two most recent commits. Um, but anyway... Um, like I said, I'll have uh, more videos coming this week for recruiting, I am sure. Just talk about more of the official vid or visitors and updates this week, and I'm sure that more commitments will be on the horizon as well. Uh, for Andrew Miller at HookemHeadlines.com, that's pretty much it. Welcome.